All right, so back to this. Uh, again, so what I left off saying was that uh, translating from English into algebra, uh, this is actually one of the, one of the pieces that uh, the ACT Corporation has identified as being a particular struggle for a lot of students on the ACT test. Again, they, they, again if you look at your handout, to, again, there are I believe five top struggles, and again, this is one of them. I th if I'm remembering correctly off the top of my head, I want to say it was number four. But uh, again, this is something that, uh, that we definitely need to practice. So again, uh, you should fully expect that you're going to uh, have a, a, an abundance of word problems that you're going to be reading through, and then it's going to be your job to uh, turn them into the correct kind of math problem. Again, usually algebraic. So uh, example number four that we have here, uh, it says that four students are about to purchase concert tickets for $18.50. Um, <clears throat> that's how much they're going to pay for each ticket. Then they go on to discover that they may purchase a block of five tickets for $80. So again, that means that there is a deal going, five tickets for $80. So how much would each of the four save if they can get a fifth person to join them <clears throat> and the five people equally divide the price of the five ticket block? Again, which is $80. So we know that if, if each of the four friends and goes to purchase individually, they know that they're going to spend $18.50. That's what's going to happen. If they were to find that, that fifth friend to uh, go to the concert with them, then they buy the five ticket block for, again, $80. But if they split that cost, let me actually write it this way, not like an idiot, but if they split that cost five ways, again, we're going to divide it by five. You've got to think that now each student is going to spend $16. So when the question comes back, how much would each of the four save, again, from $18.50, if I subtract out the $16, they stand to save $2.50 just by bringing in a fifth friend. So again, B would be our choice here. All right, uh, another type of problem to expect here are percentage problems. Now, I know that you've been working percentage problems for quite some time now, but there are a lot of different types of percentage problems. So uh, one example that uh, has already been worked out for you, um, this is going to be what we consider to be an amount of increase, so like a percentage increase or decrease type problem. Uh, it goes on here, this first example says the price of a certain stock rose from $60 a share to $65 a share, so what was the percent increase? And the way that we're going to handle this, again, more than anything, the reason why we're going through this problem is to show you that we have a quick little formula. So it's going to be the amount of the increase divided by the original amount. So as you can see here, 65 minus 60 shows that 5 is our, or I'm sorry, our, our amount of increase divided by the $60. So when we take 5 divided by 60, we're going to get 1 12th, which is going to show 8 point, basically 3 repeating. So 8.33% uh, if we round it to the nearest hundredth, that is, of an increase. All right, so example number five that we have here, uh, it says, when the bus fare increased from 50 cents to 60 cents, how much of a percent increase did it represent? So we have to understand how much did it increase. So it went from 50 cents to 60 cents. So if I were to subtract those out, this is going to go over the original amount because it started at 50. So when we start to clean this up, my numerator again, how much of an increase occurred, 10 cent increase divided by the original, and this is where it gets a little interesting, and, and the reason I say that is because we know that there are about three ways that we could present our answer here. Uh, we could say that the answer is one-fifth, the answer is 0.2, or we could say correctly in this case that the answer is going to be 20%. Again, because we're talking about a percentage increase, 20% would be our final choice. All right, average formula. Let me pull this down. Uh, unfortunately, that podcast cuts off the top little bit of the, uh, the slide, uh, so please forgive me for having to adjust that. Uh, so the average formula, again, we know how to work an average problem. Uh, again, we're going to, in order to, to do this, again, to find the average of a set of numbers, all we're going to do is we're going to add them up and we're going to divide by however many values we have. So it's, again, as you can see our little, uh, little equation that we have here, uh, to get an average, we're going to take the sum of the terms, divide by the number of the terms. Uh, so I've got an example all worked out. You can read through it if you'd like um, to, to help you see how that's going to work. Again, uh, if you've got the numbers 12, 15, 23, 40, and 40, uh, you're going to add them all up. And then since there are five numbers, we're going to divide by five to get, the, to get the average of 26 here. Again, simple enough. Um, but 
if we were to think about the more challenging type, again, just kind of as a hint, remember that using the average to find a sum, we can do that as well, uh, because the sum is always going to end up being the average times the number of terms. So what I mean by that is that in this particular example up top, when we took the 12 plus 15 plus 23 plus 40 plus 40, we got 130. We then figured that the average was 26. What we're saying is that we could use that understanding to go backwards. We could say that, yeah, if the average is 26 and there were five terms, if I multiply those, that could get me back to my sum of 130. And in certain cases, that's going to be valuable information. So again, another, another you know, scenario here. Uh, if the average of 10 numbers is 50, then they must add up to 10 times 50 or 500. So uh, here's an example in number six here that, uh, that, that we're gonna have to put that into action. It says that a total of 50 juniors and seniors were given a math test. The 35 juniors attained an average score of 80, while the 15 seniors attained an average of 70. So what was the average score for all 50 students who took the test? Now, again, this is not going to be just the simple add them all up and divide by 50 because there's 50, 50 students. Uh, we have to be a little bit more systematic here. So as far as the juniors are concerned, we need to understand that there are 35 total juniors. And from there, we said that the average was, that they scored was an 80. So what that means, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, what that means is that if we're to take the 35 times the 80, that's going to give us an average of, do the math here, of 2,800. Now, as far as the senior class goes, seniors, we know that there are only 15 total seniors. But they scored, try to stay consistent, they scored an average a little bit lower here. Their average score was a 70. So now when I take the 15 times 70, again, their sum is going to be 1,050. So if I know in terms of the overall sum, if I were to take the 2,800, which was the sum for my juniors, and add that to the 1,050, which is the sum for my seniors, and divide that by however many total students we had, 35 plus 15, or what we were told in the first sentence, divide by 50, this should give us the average. So when we take the 2,800, <clears throat> excuse me, plus the t uh, 1,050, uh, that's going to give us 3,850. Write the number correctly, divide that by 50, and now we can expect to get an average of 77, which is D for our final answer. All right, guys, the elementary algebra stuff that we want to take a look at, as you can see here, we'll, I'll give you a chance to read through this as far as the type of stuff uh, that you can expect. Uh, the first problem we want to take a look at here, number seven, it says that the weekly fee for staying at the Pleasant Lake Campground is $20 per vehicle and $10 per person. Last year, weekly fees were paid for V vehicles and P persons. Uh, so which of the following expressions gives the total amount in dollars collected for weekly fees last year. So this is another one of those changing from uh, English to algebra, I suppose. Uh, and luckily, this is a pretty easy word problem. Uh, we know that we're going to have to pay a certain amount for each vehicle, and we're going to have to pay a certain amount for each person. And those certain amounts are also given to us that you have to pay $20 per vehicle and $10 per person, and that's it. That's as simple as this problem is. We just have to be able to take this little paragraph and turn that into an algebraic expression. All right, so speaking of these expressions, down here, this is one to cooperate here. Uh, so evaluating an expression here. So uh, again, what we've got, uh, in order to evaluate an algebraic expression, we're going to plug the given values for the unknowns and calculate according to PEMDAS. Basically, what we're saying here is that we know how to substitute. Uh, once we substitute, we still have to adhere to the order of operations. So uh, in this particular case, if r equals 9, b equals 5, and g equals negative 6, and it's asking, what does r plus b minus g times 1 be b plus g equal? So, if I were to set this up, and plug in, we know that r is 9 plus b, which is 5, minus g, which is negative 6, times the quantity b, which is still 5, plus g, which is still negative 6. So I would say, that, you know, first things first, we've got to take care of our double signs and think about this as 9 plus 5 plus 6 times 5 minus 6. 
So cleaning this up, 9 plus 5 plus 6 is going to be 20. 5 minus 6 is negative 1. 20 times negative 1 is negative 20. So A is going to be our final answer. Again, following the order of operations is going to be crucial. All right. Let me just move that up. How about that? Smarter, not harder. Okay. Uh, so next thing, uh, factoring is going to be something that uh, is absolutely expected. Um, again, the, the easy type of problem, again, what's uh, being explained here, we'll let you read through yours. Uh, again, that there is going to be a pattern. Again, when that lead coefficient is one, like in this case, uh, we're looking for things that multiply to positive six, but add to that middle term of negative five. So for that reason, what multiplies to six and adds to negative five, we're thinking about negative two and negative three. So that's gonna complete our factors. So, uh, again, example number nine that we have here, it's asking which of the following is a factor of the polynomial x squared minus x minus 20. So, again, following that same pattern, what multiplies to negative 20 but adds to, in this case, realize that there's a negative 1 in front there. So, when we talk about the factors of negative 20, again, we're talking about 1 and negative 20, negative 20, and, you know, or negative 1 and 20, uh, 2 and negative 10, negative 2 and 10, things like that. But the one that we're going to land on is that this is going to split again, x here, x here. And we're going to say that negative 5 and positive 4 is going to work. So understand that we're looking for a factor, not a 0, a factor. Uh, so again, I'm looking around and I don't see x plus 4 as a choice, but luckily I do see x minus 5 as a choice. So b would be a that correct answer. All right, reading on here, uh, simplifying square roots. So uh, to simplify a square root, we're going to, again, factor out uh, the, the largest perfect square that's under the radical and then go from there. So um, I thought number 10 was kind of an interesting problem, in fact, because uh, it goes on to say that uh, 4 is less than root x, which is less than 9, uh, and that's equivalent to saying what about x. So um, I guess, and I don't know if I'm looking at this in an abstract way, but what if we change from having the four and the nine as integers, what if I change those to radicals? What I mean by that is four is equivalent to the square root of 16, which is gonna be less than root x, which is less than nine is gonna be equivalent to root 81. So once we have it written this way, again, I'm checking A, B, C, D, and E as my answer choices, and I'm not, unfortunately, not, not finding anything. So what would happen if I simply squared everything? Now we're looking at 16 less than x, less than 81 which means that we're on to something, E is going to be our choice. All right, next, multiplying and dividing powers. So uh, remember, these exponents, they're going to show up. They, again, we just have to expect that they're going to be there. So again, it's not something we panic about. It's just something that we handle. Uh, so to multiply powers with the same base, we're going to add the exponents. To divide powers with the same base, we're going to subtract the exponents. Again, we've got a couple quick examples up top there uh, to show you what we're talking about. The one we're going to do together here, number 11. Uh, says that for all non-zero r, t, and z values, we have 16 r cubed t, z to the fifth, divided by negative 4 r, t cubed, z squared. This is one of those cases where it always looks harder than it's really going to be. So if we were to start with the integers and we were to take the 16 divided by negative 4, I know that that answer is going to be negative 4. Now we just have to understand that, okay, the 16 was larger, so my uh, solution, in this case my quotient, is going to go in the numerator. Uh, doing the exact same thing with the r. So again, probably to overdo this problem, understand that that's r to the first power. Uh, so again, I have common bases. I'm going to subtract them. So r to the 3 minus 1. You'll notice that I'm putting that in the numerator because I had more in the numerator. Uh, working with the t's now, uh, I have t to the first over t cubed. So now this is going to be t to the 3 minus 1. Notice I'm putting that in the denominator because I had more to begin with in the denominator. Uh, z to the 5 minus 2, uh, again, putting that in the numerator because we had more z's up top. So to complete this, we, you know, or we are going to say, excuse me, that I have negative 4, r to the 3 minus 1 is going to be r squared, z to the 5 minus 2 is 3, over t to the 3 minus 1, which is 2, is going to be my final selection, which is saying that b is my final answer. All right, next problem, if I can click over, there we go. Uh, actually, I'm gonna stop the podcast here because we're gonna go ahead and get going with that intermediate algebra piece next. Um, so again, let me upload this part of the podcast. We'll start another one here shortly.